from St. Mark's Coptic Orthodox Church in Cleveland, Ohio. I have my father of confession, Abuna Moros, and I'm going to be asking him some questions. He's been at this church for a few years, and he's a very nice priest to have at this church, and I'm blessed to have him. Welcome to another episode of Trading Places. I'm honored here to have Father Moros from St. Mark's Coptic Orthodox Church in Cleveland, Ohio. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you, Maria, for having me. I'm going to ask you a few difficult questions. I hope you don't mind. Sure. Father, what was your name before you became a priest, and what was your job? My name was Ahmed Nassif Ghali, and I used to work as an accountant uh, in Bank of America in Canada and in Egypt also. When and where were you ordained as a priest? I was ordained uh, May 1999, and uh, I was ordained to serve in the Church of St. Abraham in uh, Long Island, New York. Before you came to America, where were you serving? I used to serve in Canada uh, for four years before that, and then uh, all my life I've been serving as a youth servant in St. George Church in Heliopolis. Okay. Cleveland Church is the main church that, that hosted our beloved Pope for years when he was sick. Can you please tell us about his visits? It was a great honor and blessings at the same time to have His Holiness multiple times uh, a year. Um, um, matter of fact, uh, he, he called us uh, that we, are, were, we were his second papal residence. So it was a great honor that was stowed upon us by God and by His Holiness and we really have enjoyed uh, every second uh, with him. Our late Pope was so wise and so funny in spite of his pains. What do you think about that? I believe it was a special grace from God that uh, he was able to balance between his public service and his um, public obligations and his, his own personal pain and suffering. And uh, he, he always thought about people first. He, was, he, he always thought about the church first and, and him last. So um, he had this heavenly blessings uh, of balancing all his responsibilities with his um, human needs and health needs. In his last visit, how do you think the Pope dealt with the knowledge that his disease is not curable and that he would not come to Cleveland again? His Holiness always um, spoke about having the problem on the outside and not allowing it to, to go on the inside of a person. And we've seen it uh, with him all these years and especially in the last year and in the last um, visit when he knew that medicine could not do anymore. Um, he, he kept his smile, he, he kept his, uh, his spirit, and again, uh, back to the wisdom. What is the scariest thing you remember during your service? I believe uh, it, it was a fearful event, not scary, but uh, when I remember that um, one of the people approached the communion uh, cup uh, to, to drink from the blood of Christ, and um, he was doing the sign of the cross and he very forcefully pushed the cup out of my hand and lots of the blood uh, spilled on the floor. So that was a very bad moment because, uh, for, and for, for any priest, because um, uh, we should be guarding the cup and, or the blood and, and the bread of Christ by uh, our lives. So it, it was a very fearful event. What was the most embarrassing thing in your service? <laughs> Embarrassing, not too many, thank God. But I remember that I had uh, both funeral and wedding on, on, on the same day, and I f finished the wedding, uh, I finished the funeral, and came back from the cemetery. And, and you know, you, you are in the mood of, of, of sharing with people their, their sorrow. So I came to the wedding, and I, I think I, I met the bride's um, father. Um, and I told him, I'm so sorry for your loss, and it was so embarrassing, but I just uh, took it back and explained the situation. But yeah, it, it was embarrassing. <laughs> Sometimes I've fallen asleep in the liturgy. Have you ever slept in the altar? Yeah, a few times. I do laugh. Uh, when you uh, sleep so late and wake up so early, and uh, so... Uh, you're allowed to be fired because you're a human being. At the same time, uh, I think it happens 
uh, whenever I have another priest praying with me, uh, so I, I, we, we switch places. So sometimes it happens, yeah. What do you do when you're not serving? How do you spend your free time? I have no free time. <laughs> Just kidding. Well, um, I spend time with my family. I exercise, I, I work out, I read. Um, I try to enjoy every mo moment as much as I can. What type of sport do you like? I love basketball, yeah. I play it and I watch it, so, oh. yeah. Who is your favorite saint and why? My favorite saint is Saint Anthony uh, because um, um, in a very young age, he, um, as you know from his story, that he went into the church, he listened to the gospel reading, and he took one verse from, from the Bible that retouched his life and he followed Christ and he became the father of monks. So um, um, he, is, he is my saint, he is my role model in, in, in believing in the teaching of the Bible and the Word of God and uh, really by the grace of God just uh, believe it with all your life and, and do it. Can you give any advice that you lived with when you were younger? I think I can remember advice that um, that like not to let any negative people or negativity in general to um, surround you, but follow the positive people, follow the positive thinking, and continue the path that you want for yourself. So. Uh, be, be, because we have lots of uh, negativity around us, so it's so easy to come inside. So yes, uh, stay away from negative people. Thank you for watching this episode of Trading Places. I hope you enjoyed your time, and I hope to see you soon.